Well, firstly, um, there are some things that we don't realise yet that I haven't discussed with you yet about faith and what faith does. If you can think, you remember the spirit world is like spheres or dimensional existences, right? And by the way, Paget passed into the second sphere when he passed. So there's this misconception that he passed at one with God or close to, but in reality he passed into the second sphere and was shortly thereafter in the third after he passed. But he had quite a lot to deal with. He was still smoking even when he was on earth, so he had quite a lot of self-love issues to deal with as well. So there's a, there are misconceptions about Paget's condition. Just because you're channeling a high level spirit, it doesn't mean that you yourself are in a good condition. It just means in that particular moment you can be in a good condition. So was it, it, was it his quality of faith at that time? Yes. Or was it the amount of prayer that he'd been engaged in? Or both. both. He, he, he had a very, very strong faith. So, so strong that actually we brought to him uh, once a week, we brought to him a group of um, spirits in the first sphere and those spirits in the first sphere would be convinced by his faith to actually start connecting to celestial spirits to get help because of Paget's faith. So Paget's faith was very, very strong. It came from his background a lot. He had a background of, Christian, of Christianity. So he had a lot of faith in God, that God exists and that God was good. Right? So these mm -hmm. are very two, two very strong personality feelings, uh, feelings that he had within himself. And while he wasn't very focused on dealing with a lot of his own emotions, we did speak with him on lots of occasions about emotions that he never recorded, about his own condition. We also spoke, if you look at the pageant messages and reread them, and you start, you'll see that all the way through it there is this thing about desire, longing, intentions and aspirations, which are all emotions, are they not? Right. And almost every message that you read has something said about those particular aspects of your emotional state. On top of that, um, whenever you have faith in God, your condition temporarily rises for a period that you have and exercise that faith. We actually describe that to him in the messages themselves. There are some messages that you may recall in the pageant messages that describe this temporary raise of condition. He once asked me how faith healing occurs and I gave him some answers in the messages themselves. And one of the ways that I said is when you long to God for God's love and you have faith that it is going to occur, this raises your condition enough that the actual event can occur. It's not a permanent condition because the permanent condition only results from releasing the underlying causal emotions that create your faith disappearing again afterwards. And this is why many of you have had instances where you've raised your faith and, and you've had moments of clarity. Many of you can remember this, right? Where you have these moments of clarity where everything is just like pristine and clear and, and, and just very firm in your feelings. You know it's true in this moment of clarity. But why does that moment of clarity disappear? Well, it only disappears because it's not a permanent condition yet. It's only know. going to become a permanent condition when the emotional error that prevents that clarity from existing permanently is removed from your soul. But the beauty of faith is that it raise your, raises your condition temporarily which enables you, if you think about it, a person in the third sphere or even in the second sphere it, sitting here on earth is able to stream in more information into them in a raised condition than they are in their lower condition. And what about divine love? And of course that also applies to divine love. You're able to receive more divine love in that condition. So my understanding was that your soul is a mixture of errors and truth mm -hmm. and assuming that nothing is. has changed and there's still the same amount of error that there was five minutes or one day or one hour earlier, Yep. then, um, then I, faith my, my understanding was that until you remove some of the error, that there's no space for the love to flow in. No, but faith creates a temporary condition for new <laughs> truth to enter you. So is it like a balloon being expanded a little bit and then going back to its original shape? Yeah, basically. It, it's a quality that's unique from the soul's perspective. Faith is a quality that makes you open to God. Right? 
It also is a quality that makes you open to each other when you think about it. If you have faith in another person, you're very open to them and helping you and help getting assistance from them. If you don't have faith in them and you feel critical of them or judgmental of them, right. then you don't listen to them with an open heart, do you? Right? So when you have a, at this quality of faith, it raises your condition temporarily enough for you to actually receive more. So is that how he was able to continually receive divine love without actually working on his emotions at all? Well, it's not true to say he didn't work on his emotions, Peter. Okay. The, the truth is that it's just not recorded in the messages. Oh, okay. uh, but it, there are indications of it in the messages. If you look at the messages surrounding his daughter's death, for example, when, he, when, he, when his daughter died, his faith was at the lowest. Right? So he had no faith at all. That's neater, is it? That, that's neater. right, yep. And when he had no faith at all, not even his own soulmate could speak with him. For a period of two weeks, she couldn't even speak with him. He, wouldn't, he refused to even speak with anyone, any of the spirits, but he even refused to speak to his own soulmate. So when you go through a dark emotion, that's the result. You will actually, and you need to go through the dark emotion. And during that two weeks, he went through lots of dark emotions. Lots of dark emotions about doubts about us as his spirit friends. Lots of dark emotions about soulmate relationship. Lots of dark emotions about whether he was told truth or not all the way up till before then. Lots of, and, he, and he cried a lot because he was so emotional about his daughter's dying. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. Now, in the process of doing that, he released a lot of emotion, causal emotion. And in the process of releasing the, the causal emotion, what happened was his soulmate could reconnect with him two weeks later and tell him actually she had a lot of difficulty connecting with him up till then because of his emotional condition. And then his daughter connected. And then his daughter connected mm -hmm. and that increased his faith again. So now, can you see it went in mm -hmm. cycles for him. Right. right. So he went into the darkness of the emotion and then he came out of the darkness of the emotion into some light again. And remember, all the way through the messages, we're saying to him, actually, you're not in the space yet where we can give you this message. You're not in the space yet where we can give you this message. Why? Because he had yet to deal with a group of emotions or a group of doubts that he had. And his only way of doing that is to have more faith, ask God for more of God's love, and naturally, emotions get dealt with in that process. Does that make sense? How many of you have experienced already where you've just had a longing for God's love and you've really felt this longing and all of a sudden you feel God's love entering you and all of a sudden you just burst out crying because it's just entering you and it just feels so emotional. Right? You're releasing a causal emotion then. God's love is already triggering something inside of you. Does that make sense? And that's what's happening. And this was a natural process that, that Paget didn't even understand what was happening and couldn't describe to somebody, mm. but it was happening to him all the time. So he would receive a bit more love, more love. But in the darkest times, when his daughter passed, he had, he had no faith. And he had lots of dark doubts and dark emotions and everything. And it took him weeks to get out of that state. He also had times, if you have a look at the pageant message again, in, in its whole entirety, instead of message by message, you'll see that there were cycles when he spent time with certain people and the spirits told him, look, you need to stop pending, spending time with those mm. people. And why did the Spirit say that to him? Because when he spent time with those people, his faith went... And even reading certain books. Yeah, they went down. Mm. And then when he started reading books, one of the books was, uh, was one of the founders of the Jehovah's Witness faith, right? That we told him, don't read that anymore, right? And the reason why is because it was affecting his faith. It was affecting his belief systems. Right. And, and because of that, it caused a lack of connection. So the connection with the spirit world will ebb and flow based upon what we're dealing with emotionally. However, when we make a permanent shift inside of our soul on an issue, from that moment on, whatever that shift had caused in terms of damage in our life, that damage can no longer be caused anymore. So after Paget, for example, made the shifts that he made when Nita passed, when his daughter passed, and by the way, for those who don't know, his 18-year-old daughter passed, right? Uh, unexpectedly, in a, in, an, in a little operation, they expected her to live and she died. And the spirits actually had told her, 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 her his, own, his own wife had told her before him beforehand that she would live. So that added to his doubt. And so, and so he went into this very, very dark place, dealt with lots of emotions. And this is a very similar state to what the, the people who were associated with my life in the first century went through when I died. 
So up until the time I died, very few people were even connected enough to God to receive any divine love, even the people who had followed me for many, many years. But when I died, they were so grief-stricken about my death that it triggered lots and lots of causal emotions in them. And for nearly six weeks, the majority of them spent crying, right? which caused all this stuff to come out of them, all this grief and all this other emotion to come out of them, and it raised their condition permanently. But the beauty of faith is that it can raise your soul condition temporarily. So this ex the extension of faith is how he was able to connect. Yes. Um, and obviously faith, you can have lots of faith, but also have lots of emotional injuries at the same time. Right? This is the, also the beauty of faith. You don't have to be perfect to have faith. Right? So is this what happens in the, in the Christian churches where you go, go along to you know, one of these Pentecostal meetings and they're all praying for Jesus and yep. they're all you know, singing and talking in tongues and whatever and, and, and somehow they, they seem to get somewhere. Yes. <laughs> Even though they're not addressing any emotions, they're not, like, they're not they working are. on addictions or they're not working on expectations or any of that stuff. That's correct. And they don't know any, half the things they believe is all back to front and upside down, yep. but they still seem to be getting somewhere. That's right. And the reason why is they are receiving divine love in that moment. I, we can try an experiment of this if you wish. We could choose a song that affects most of you emotionally here and get you all to sing it while we're here, right? And I can guarantee in that particular moment, if that song's about God and you knew the words and everything and you're connected with your emotions, that the energy in this entire place would rise temporarily to an entirely different condition. All right? Now, the only problem with that is... It's temporary. <laughs> it's temporary. <laughs> So what happens after you've finished singing it and, and you've cried a bit and whatever else? Some of you might have dealt with some causal emotion, but others maybe not. And so what happens? We go back down to our normal state. Is this why happy pills are so popular? <laughs> it's exactly why. It's also why church is so popular on Sunday. Right. It's exactly the same reason. Because many people go to the church, get that kick, if you like, that emotional kick that raises them to a condition. They feel a sense of inner peace, which is about divine love flowing into them, all of those kind of things. But the rest of the time, they avoid why they're not connected permanently. And what I'm trying to teach you is how to connect permanently, not temporarily, by addiction. So at, so. at those times in the church, though, they, they've had this extension of faith happening to them like Paget was happening. Yes, exactly the same. Exactly the same process and exactly the same effect. And any single person on the planet can do it. You can do it. You can have a time of temporary faith where your faith increases and you can heal somebody even in that state. Yes? In that temporary state, you can. But you'll finish up going back down to your real state until you deal with the underlying emotional condition, the underlying soul condition, which is not just emotions, remember. Mm. It's emotions, desires, passions, morals and all those other aspects of it, which we often ignore. But it's the total condition of the soul that determines where you are most of the time. But it's faith that raises you from that condition to a new location temporarily. And the thing about faith is it makes you feel so good that you start getting, you can actually start getting addicted to just trying to get the faith rather than actually dealing with the reason why you're not in a state of permanent faith or permanent uh, set, set of Is that like spiritual alcoholism? It, it is, yeah. Yeah, it is exactly that. We're high on the spirit man, you know? Like, yeah, it's, it's exactly that. And there are literally thousands and thousands of Pentecostal churches that live off of that, that temporary creation mm. of that temporary state. Mm. Right? And there's no harm in it except the harm of when they get bound down to the normal state, are they learning how to face their life in a permanent way that can raise their state permanently to that condition? And the answer there is, most of the time, no. But isn't that because they don't actually understand how to do that? No, it's not. It's, because, it's not just because they don't understand how to do it. It's because a lot of times they don't want to. Okay. Right? Because, because, because what am I addicted to most of the time on the planet? I'm addicted to feeling good. And any time I feel bad, what do I do with my emotions? 
I distract myself from them and get out of them, do I not? Yes. Right? Most people in Christian religions do exactly this. So in other words, they go along to the church, they have a lovely singing session. Oh, the download of divine love is happening. You've got all these celestial spirits around them and all this is actually happening. We've got all these celestial... It's wonderful. You go along to one, you'll feel the, it's wonderful in that moment. You sit down to listen to the preacher tell, talk his talk, right? So you sit down and you're listening to the preacher and he starts talking about the wrath of God. What's just happened? <laughs> What's just happened is all of a sudden we've gone from this beautiful place of truth and love and, and download of divine love into the soul. Now my soul's getting crushed by a teaching that, uh, that it is false and my soul even knows it. Right at the moment, my soul feels its own self being shrunk by what's being stated to it. So you get this fire and brimstone preacher. He's out there hammering at how bad you are and bad this and bad this and you're sinners and you've got to do repent and da, 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 And off he goes and, and you're just going, uh, you know, inside of your soul. Like you're just shrinking. And then all of a sudden he gets off. You beauty, we clap because he's got off now. <laughs> and... <laughs> Which is half the reason why you clap when I get off anyway. But then <laughs> and then, so we, that's why we get up. And then we start to sing again and all of a sudden again that same download, you know, that same feeling, that same passion is there in my, relation, my personal relationship with God. And unfortunately, they can feel it, but they don't then translate that into their logic. So they can feel, right, there was this high part then when I sang the song and when I was, de and I was praying, it was really high, I felt really good. And then the preacher talked and I felt really low. And then when he talked about hellfire, I went down here. And then, and then when it got to the end and he said, oh, let's sing some songs. And there were some really nice songs about God's love. <laughs> and I was up here. And, and, I, and I don't go back over and go, hmm, <laughs> high, low, high, low. And then say, when was I high? That was down that condition. We don't use any logic, you see, do we? Most of the time, we don't use any logic at all. What we do is we look at the whole thing and say, oh, it was an okay experience and there was moments when I felt fantastic. Instead of saying, hey, so let's look at the moment when I felt fantastic. What do I learn from that? And let's look at the moment when I felt terrible. What's God telling me there? God's telling me huge things there in that process. So they're getting told every single Sunday they go to church what's really the truth. What part is connecting them to God and what part isn't? and yet ignoring that. Right? And they're ignoring that because if I leave this religion, you know, my friends might not love me anymore. I'm ignoring it for all sorts of emotional reasons inside of myself. Does that make sense? And that's why they ignore it. So is, is faith happening on all different levels then? I mean, you're saying if, if there's no action, then, then there's no faith. So it must be happening at a physical <laughs> level. And it must be happening at a mental level because there's like a, a desire there or a, a decision and it must be happening at a soul level as well. So, well, in the end, Peter, everything comes from the soul. Right. But but there are emotions that influence what we do with that information coming from the soul that are also coming from the soul. So so I can at the same time be longing for God's love to enter me and singing at the top of my voice because I just love the feeling of that and be receiving divine love. And then a moment later, just one moment later. I can be in a total different condition because of an emotion of approval for, with the minister. A moment later, I can say, instead of saying, hey, minister, minister, uh, can I just say something? You know how you talk about God being a God of uh, punishment? Well, that, that doesn't sit with me. And, he's, and what will he say? You're about the Bible and off you go. You know what I mean? Like, so, so, you know, there'd be lots of criticism about that because of your statement. But, but you see... I'm now emotionally hooked into, so I, so I love the high, but I'm also emotionally hooked into the fact that I want his approval. So that's my low. My low is because of my own emotion. And actually what happened throughout the entire service tells me exactly, inside of myself, it tells me exactly what the truth is. But unfortunately, I don't want to acknowledge that because acknowledging that might mean that I may have to leave the highs because this thing doesn't feel good all the time, or I may have to, my whole family may be in it, and there might be such a thing called excommunication in this church. Whenever you say that, you know, God's not a punishing God, 
or you know some other such uh, Jesus isn't God by the way and the Holy Spirit isn't God and all these other things that you want to say that you don't feel inside of yourself you you feel quite differently about everyone will attack you everyone and maybe even excommunicate you so so what's driving you to not do that and live in truth there your own emotions and that's the low so the high is your faith in God, your love for God, your desire for God, the feeling for God, your singing about God. And then as soon as he starts talking, the minister starts talking about all these untruths, then you go into your lows. Your lows are, why am I addicted to this minister? Why, what, what's going on inside of me there? Why can't I speak the truth? I don't feel what he's saying to me. I feel like the opposite does that. Why can't I speak up? Why can't, and all that. And there's my low. There's my stuff that I'm not dealing with. And that's inhibiting my relationship with God. So yes, the truth is that the majority of people who are in Pentecostal Christian religion space who enter this place of, of deep desire for God are receiving divine love at that moment. And at that moment, while they're singing and dancing and feeling those feelings, there are often literally thousands of celestial spirits with them, helping them, praying for them to receive more love. And it's a beautiful thing. But unfortunately, what we finish up doing is we don't look at the entire thing of when we were high, when we were low, when we were high, when we were low, and look at the lows and see the emotional addiction that we have there and release it. We don't do that. What we do is we ignore all of that because we don't have any faith that we can actually be closer to God than we currently are. In the end, that's why we ignore it. You see, see if I had some faith that I could have a permanent relationship of bliss with God and not just this temporarily Sunday-based one which goes in cycles all the way through a sermon and I actually believed that there was a reason why this relationship with God was cycling like this and I actually started focusing on looking at when I'm high and looking at when I'm low and examining the emotional reasons within myself which I, by the way, feel at the time, most of the time and if I looked at all of that, I'd be able to, I'd be able to create a permanent space where I'm high on God's love and even higher again if I release even more and even higher again if I release even more because it makes sense that God, if God is infinite then love is infinite and so forth. So, so the problem that most people on the planet face is that we tend to blind ourselves to the truth that's being presented to us at every single moment. The truth that's being presented to us every single moment is that we have times of high, times of low, times of high, times of low. In the times of low, there's an emotional cause. If we release the emotional cause, that low, that particular low doesn't need to happen anymore. Right? And then we could have every single Pentecostal church in the country and on the planet in a space, the entire sermon, in a space where they're hearing truth 100% of the time. So you've seen a calibration, I think, I think John, John and, and um, Joy, sorry Joy, John and Joy have calibrated a lot of these talks at like 14 or 1500 or whatever on the Hawkins scale of calibration of, of truth. You imagine that every single Pentecostal church that you ever could go to had a permanent calibration at that level. And on top of that, everyone's singing and dancing and how did you come away feeling then? Uh, and that's what's possible. But th the thing that seems to be stopping it is that belief that the Bible is the word of God and that's set in concrete. Well, remember how I started this discussion, how I said our beliefs have to be confronted, our morals have to be confronted. And the things that are stopping it are morals, beliefs, all of these falsehoods that interfere. So the truth is that Paget had some of those going on too, mm -hmm. right? all the way through, and it's evident all the way through the Paget messages. And it's evident all the way through that he had periods where his faith was high, periods where his faith was low. Obviously, when his faith was low, he had to deal with emotions before his faith could get up again. But that's not quite as obvious when you read the messages. But when we talk about the feelings associated, you can see all the way through the messages, it's all about feelings, aspirations, inspiration, desire, passion, longing. Those words are used all the time. I think the word passion is used about a hundred times. And so do all those mix together to make up like a cocktail which is called faith. Exactly. And, and, but faith being the assured expectation that if we stay in this place where we trust God all the time 
and we trust that we can become at one with God. At, all, at any moment, one of us could become at one with God and that we know that we're on the path to do that just because we can feel our connection with God growing, then, of course, we're in a state where faith raises us to this level where we're willing to act and we're willing to do things harmonious with truth and love automatically. How much faith does it require, do you think, to, to, to be able to stand in an arena with 10,000 people looking at you, 10,000 people looking at you, and a lion coming towards you to eat you, and yet you can be there completely calmly. Well, that's how many of your Christian brothers and sisters from near the first century and second centuries of our period of time, they had that experience. Many of them were burnt alive. You imagine, can you imagine, hanging on a, on a stick, right, with a fire underneath you ready to be lit and thousands of people watching you burn and cheering and yet you still are peaceful about that. That's faith. And faith, you've got to have some pretty sure things going on inside of yourself, don't you, to have that faith. And that's the kind of faith that we want. So I'm going to have a break now because otherwise I'll keep talking and, and, uh, and we'll talk more about the personal effects of faith on our life.